Welcome to video number 61. This video will be in probably three or four parts. We'll see how it goes. The reason for that is when I did it all together, it took too long. So I don't want to uh, make anything too long and difficult. And so as you can see, I've made a little index just up the top there. And that's what I'm planning on doing. The first thing will be around a data set and a pivot table. Second thing will be about creating some reports with formula and drop down boxes and some of my usual tricks. Third thing is to uh, create some links to a program builder by using um, a max if function. And lastly, we'll potentially look at a user form in terms of adding the data to the database. So what am I talking about? Well, it's about a file that will manage all the load lifted by your athletes and allow you to track over time how those loads are progressing and changing. So let's have a little bit of a look at what I would consider a, a finished product. So we've got a database page and as you can see and if you are familiar with my videos you'll know how I like to set things up. We are using once again table references and what we have is dates in column A, automatic loading of a week label in column B, an athlete's name in column C, columns D and E automatically fill themselves in with a formula. We've got an exercise in column F and simply load reps and predicted 1RM got about 500 rows of data there. One of the methods of analysis I've chosen is a pivot table. Here you can see, uh, if I just expand column A it might be a little bit easier. You can see that we've got all the weeks of the season so far and some of them have got the option where there's more than one day where a particular exercise has been performed and therefore there are multiple values but down the bottom in column uh, row 15 at the moment you'll see that for all of the people who are in the position group back there is a number for max of predicted 1RM so if I drag athlete down into this mix and took position group out And simply chosen athlete what we'd see now is uh, for that particular athlete here is the max load lifted across this group of exercises so we'll have a look at how that pivot table works uh, in this first video in the second video we'll check out some formula based options to do the same thing kind of the usual stuff that I do different overlay options and, and so on. And finally what we'll look at is the creation of this table here, this first table called Max Lifts. Now the real value of having a database method of collecting this stuff is so that you can, with a quick formula, pull out what the maximum lift for this athlete is, because you can use that information when you're writing his or her next program. So uh, let's get on to the building part. Go back, go over to a empty form. So I've created a set of random data here. What I would like to do is convert that to a table. I've got a little shortcut on my quick access toolbar and you can build that up by clicking this little drop down arrow here and start adding things to it or I can go and find it on the insert tab now it's guessed my data and that looks pretty good so I'm going to say OK I'm going to call that TBL database and before I put formula in to populate B, D, E and I. I'm just going to go and do some more table building on the max page. Normally I'd call this a control panel page but I've got 
um, a table here which is about those maxes so that's kind of uh, the reason for my inconsistency so I want to do table formats for these four tables here so I'm going to select an advance and just quickly make these into tables Alright, so we've now got four tables that we can use throughout the spreadsheet. Okay, so the first one that we want to do is to give us some descriptive data, particularly around the date field. So if you look at this table, what we've got is a whole lot of unique column headings, and we want to make data entry easy by having as much of this stuff be automatic as possible. So we don't need to tell uh, the user to fill in the week label because the date should tell us that already. So I'm just gonna do an index function. I wanna look in the table. If I type TBL on a PC, I can automatically see the list. And I can remember that it's called TBL weeks. I'm looking for the answer in this particular column, the column called week name. And I'm finding that by searching for the date. Now we have to be a little bit careful here. Almost all the time I use zero, which is an exact match. But this time I'm going to be using a1. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, our date table or our weeks table only has the dates for each Monday listed. And now this column A is, is going to have any kind of date. So really what it's trying to find is the corresponding week label for the date, regardless of whether it's a Monday or another day of the week. Just go across to position. This one should be easy. We're looking in the athletes column. We're trying to return the position by matching the athlete name. In the athlete name column, this time it's an exact match. So if I scoop that entire thing out and paste it in, it'll preserve it and it'll make it exactly the same as the previous one. And all I have to do is go in here and edit slightly the column that I'm looking at. So now we've filled in those two fields. We can move on to the last one. And now um, this reference table that I've got set up here, that you can see it, basically is a table that exists in lots of different forms. So you might have different numbers to this. Um, you might have all sorts of different variables in there, but the concept will be the same.
right so this one's an, an exact match as well now this isn't our final answer our final answer is a couple of steps away so what we're really trying to ask is what factor do we need to multiply the load by to get the predicted 1RM and so if I wrap this lot in brackets and multiply it by the load in column G we're going to have our answer don't worry about that col comments column we'll see a bit more of that when we look at our data entry methods in the last video either by user form or just spreadsheet method so we've now got a much more complete data set remember we called this table tbl database you can see it up there in the top left corner so we're pretty much ready to do our first method of data analysis which is a pivot table so if i click on insert pivot table what we'll have is a wizard that asks us what data that's correct we want it on a new worksheet and i'm going to call that worksheet simply pivot and now what we want is our exercises across the top so i'm going to drag that to the columns what we want is our predicted 1rm in the value area let's start by looking at it by athlete but know that we could do it by position or position group if we wanted to and then i'm going to pull down week rather than date because that gives us a slightly better summary and to get started i'm just going to pick one athlete and now if we look at this data it's looking okay um, we just need to tidy things up a little bit so either down here in the um, pivot table fields area i can click on value field settings and i get a box up here uh, i'll just drag it there so we can see it so what we actually want is the max we want to take away all those decimal places so i think remove them all completely So we now have something that actually looks quite reasonable. If we change the player, we get things appearing. Now what I want to do is if I right click inside the table, I can go to design up on the toolbar and it gives us options up here, particularly with, our, with regard to grand totals. I only want to see them for columns, not rows because there's no point summing to get a deadlift and flat bench it's really only important to look at the overall max for a particular exercise over a number of weeks and if I sort of drag in date under week we can look at another feature so as you can see the date for each workout has been put inside each week and now that can be quite interesting but what's really cool is there's a little minus button there that you can collapse and you don't have to go through the whole lot you can click inside the column right click collapse entire field so we now have a summarized version of eight weeks so far for these one two three four five exercises now different athletes will have performed different exercises so you can sometimes see those column headings change but we've already got some pretty interesting information i might just overwrite this and call it overall max and so if we wanted to we could actually make use of this um, bottom row of data by pasting it into um, and program building page when we're trying to do referencing to a 1RM so that pivot table option is pretty interesting you can do some really good analysis on the fly if you're wanting to do um, a different type of analysis for example across a position group you can get rid of the athlete and you can say show me this stuff 
for forwards or for backs for example and suddenly things are starting to change so the um, ability to muck around with this data and do player comparisons player maxes position maxes and so on is is pretty nice just inside a pivot table window so that's part one of the video se series um, as i have talked about before the key to this pivot table working really well are the column headings so as you can see we've got very clear unique column headings that allow us to do such a simple pivot table analysis uh, see you uh, in a few seconds for video number two.